Calgary report. And have we got Ross? No. Helen. Helen. So Ross Trotter will be watching online and running down the stairs at this point, I suspect. Oh, okay. So you Let's have see how long it takes and move forward quickly. Thank you. So we've got um, we've got a presentation which I'll leave until Ross comes through, but we've also got our usual bi monthly report. And there's just a, a number of things to draw your attention to there. The first one is the ongoing audit um, to improve quality in our curbside recycling. So that work is continuing, and you'll see that we've made uh, a substantial improvement in terms of the proportion of um, contaminated recycling and also the number of bins that are and truckloads that are being rejected. Uh, there is a little bit of fluctuation and a little bit of an increase in sort of May, June, but the general trend is very good. Uh, the second point to note is the um, progress with the organics processing plant upgrade, uh, which is going through its procurement process at the moment, and also the transitional uh, initiatives on the site to reduce the potential for odour in the interim. Uh, and the biggest thing there is to reduce the stock of compost on that site. So at the moment there's, um, there's considerable stock of mature compost that we're, um, that we're progressively moving off that site. A lot of it's going into the paddocks of our wastewater treatment plant where it's being used for soil conditioning, where we're doing a whole lot of planting to control midges. So it's a, it's a big win-win for council that we can use that uh, material uh, so constructively. The third thing of note is the um, substantive closure of the Burwood Resource Recovery Park. So that Burwood Resource Recovery Park was of course um, an earthquake recovery initiative to take all of the demolition material and there's an enormous amount of material that's been placed out at Burwood. Uh, and also of course the sensitive materials from the buildings that were demolished uh, and where people died through the earthquakes. Mm. So that work is, um, is underway in terms of the landscaping and the planting, and it's looking pretty good out there. There's a couple of photos in the report. Uh, and finally, there's a, um, a bit of a summary on closed landfills and the remediation work that's underway at those closed landfills. So uh, there may be some questions on some of those. I understand there, there were some questions raised at the informal, so we're happy to, um, to cover those. Right. Sam. Yeah. Thanks, Helen. Yeah, thanks, Helen. It's a really good report. Uh, just two things from me. Around the curbside collections, so it says that we're not meeting our levels of service with a truck and driver shortage, but we've taken steps to change that. I mean, given it's a core function of council, do you know what steps we've taken to fix it? Because it does seem... Yeah, we're having some direct negotiations with our providers under the contract. So did the, what, I, what I couldn't work out, though, was has the contract changed where they're not providing a driver and a truck? No, the contract hasn't changed, but the service provided to us under that contract has deteriorated. Yep. So we're working with them to improve that. So it's around collections. Yep. So why would we be negotiating that's a contract? They're not they're not meeting our level of service. Yeah, so so what we've issued them uh, a notice direction yep. in terms of uh, not being compliant with the KPIs. Uh, there's been a significant improvement since we've issued that notice of direction. Right. So we're just working with them. Um, one of the uh, issues has been around uh, the availability of trucks and drivers, and they have now brought on uh, five new trucks, new drivers, so we're expecting to see improvement in that area. However, we're monitoring that on a daily basis. So is there anything we could be doing at our end to get that right? It just seems... If we're not meeting a level of service in a core council function, that we should put some urgency around it. So I just didn't, I didn't get a sense from. It says we're addressing the issue, but it's not resolved. So can you just give us a bit more clarity? Yep. On that? So we have um, been in discussions with another provider as to being able to pick up some of the where the uh, when they're unable to, for example, if it's missed streets, and able to get around on the streets. So we have uh, another. Um, uh, uh, option there to, to step in straight away should they should they not sh should they fail in that area right and they would compensate for that yeah, absolutely yes yeah, so we the contract be paying twice yeah. correct okay cool thank you thanks Sam Mike thank you just a 
question around Barry's Bay landfill, um, and obviously there's report coming back at some stage with um, looking at the, the seawall. Are we also looking at the future of that closed landfill and the potential to, to remove it as well? Uh, that, that's quite a significant uh, landfill uh, in terms of, um, I mean, I'd, it'd be great if we, if we could remove these potential issues from, from, from becoming a problem in the future, it'd be, be, be great. Um, there is a, a significant uh, amount of material in that landfill. The damage to the sea wall, wall as, um, has been reported back has just been minimal in, in, a, in a couple of areas. Uh, we also have an, uh, an understanding that there's other repairs to sea walls um, as well in the area, which we're trying to get the work uh, coordinated, get all that done at once. So um, at this stage, it, it, that would be our recommendation just to, to repair that sea wall. Okay. But will we have some idea, I guess, of I guess the future of that, that area in terms of what we see will happen with sea level rise, future storm events, and the potential of actually it being um, compromised? Uh, look, there is that potential. Um, ideally, uh, the, uh, the would be would be looking at an improvement of the seawall, the um, how, it's, how it looks as you've got the wall, and then the actual uh, landfill material is up above that. So there is that potential for that to, if it gets eroded, to come down. So it would almost need to be higher. Yeah. I think when you look at that, uh, look at that scenario with the the length of the seawall and what the repair costs would need to be to or, or to um, make that more robust is then when you start to look at do you want to be taking some of that material out? Yeah. I, I guess one of the things we need to take into account when we look to, to repair the seawall is actually what happens if there was a storm that compromised it and the cost to um, the council to actually fix a compromised landfill that actually goes into our system. So it's also looking at the, <coughs> that cost as well. Agreed. And look, actually... I'd, yeah, and I'd be happy to do some, some um, numbers on what it would cost to actually remove. Uh, there's a couple of sections with a road running through that yeah. where, where it faces onto that, that sea edge. Uh, I'll be happy to do some numbers around what that would look at to, yeah. to remove that. Yeah, I just yeah, I guess when we have a look at these landfills that are right along the water's edge, um, actually taking a look into the boards of the future and saying actually what should we be doing at this point of time to stop any potential problems in the future. Mm. Thanks. Yeah, I'm sorry. That's a good point, Mike. Uh, Jimmy. Questions. First one on page uh, sixty-six uh, regarding to lost the uh, yellow beans seven hundred thirty-seven uh, beans uh, confiscated. But before, you know, prior to the re reinstate, I just want to know what the options for those customers or those the, uh, public owners they can dispose uh, to their the recycling the, the material. Because I'm concerned that if they put into the the, the red bin, you know, just encourage them uh, to mold the landfill the, the kind of the material. This is my concern. What's options? Yeah, it, it, it's a hard call because, of course, the, the reason we're doing taking this action is to stop the contamination of the whole load. So when we get a number of contaminated yellow bins, um, if we if we're over that ten percent threshold, um, the whole truckload can 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 then have to go to, to landfill. Um, it is concerning that the amount of reinstatements isn't as as much as the the bins that have been removed. Um, there's a couple of reasons for what well, we have had uh, um, 150 odd reinstated. Um, we have had converted recyclers. That's um, where we've identified uh, poor behaviour. But on this, when we've gone back to reassess, that they have been at that gold star level. Um, so, so their bins have have remained. Uh, the other side of it too is that. We're still going through um, with the uh, the RFID tagging and removing of bins. So in a lot of cases, those bins have been additional to their entitlement. So they've had more than, than one bin at their option. So when we've taken a bin away, they have actually had another bin. Or um, they've gone and stolen one, which we can identify through the RFID system. Thank you. So on. <clears throat> page 68 
regarding the handheld and the battery the recycling, you have a seven kind of the receptors. I just want to know this seven is cover the current is four or five the those the refuse the station or not? It's outside the of the refuse station. Yes. On page sixty-eight, we do have we do have them at the the echo drops. Um, yes. So there's there's the ability to take those um, to to those recycling centres of the echo drops for the recycling as well. Okay, that's for the customer. Less than they need to deliver by themselves. Am I right? They do. So yes. so we've got specific sites as you see on the map around and that's what we've been able to achieve through the, through the funding. Yes. That scheme is now going to be um, developed over Canterbury. Uh, we've had a lot of interest from other councils around New Zealand. This is this is something that Christchurch that we as resource recovered recovery have initiated. So we've had a lot of other interest from other councils um, in looking at doing this national um, the really good thing about it is what we've always intended with this scheme is we want it to be a product stewardship so whereby the uh, the manufacturers or the retailers would step up and take over the scheme mm -hmm. and we've already seen one retailer um, show interest in, in taking it over which is ultimately what we wanted. Okay. Excellent. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Hey, I'm going to pause questions for now because I think we should look at your presentation mm -hmm. Sure. and then we can have all the questions after that. And so next is Phil when we come back. Do you have a yeah. So I just form my notes. So we uh, have a service delivery review underway. Um, the, uh, some of the key recommendations uh, incorporated in is to promote the diversion of recycling organic material from landfill, um, including investment resource recovery infrastructure, advocacy for product stewardship programs, consideration of alternative collections methods for, for glass, and we'll go through that on the, uh, the final slide there. Uh, changes in collection area for council curbside services. Uh, this is where we're looking at uh, the inner city and Banks Peninsula. And uh, offer flexibility in the, the bins provided and incorporate uh, a, a charging system for those who do require uh, more, uh, uh, more volume. Um, public consultation will be carried out on, on those, those recommendations. Um, the, uh, the, the, there's quite a few interactions that we uh, need to consider as part of this review. Uh, the first part which we've initiated, we've uh, looked at the, uh, the surveys which have gone out and I'll talk about those next. Um, benchmarking, so we've gone out to other councils around New Zealand just to um, get an understanding of, of uh, how, how they go about it, what works, what doesn't. And we have a uh, workshop for elected members in September uh, this year to to um, uh, to present what what way we were got to at that stage. Uh, the other bits of work that are going on at the same time is the bylaw review um, and um, how that interacts with national uh, the regulations and also um, we've got a number of elements there. Uh, that we've got uh, divi divided into two parts as, as, as we go through. Those are the key things we'll be looking at. Um, to give community feedback from the LTP, that, that, that's consistent with what we expected. We'd already identified a number of these things. Um, we received a number of submissions, uh, including developers uh, from the, for the moderate density housing. Uh, objecting to paying the waste minimisation charge where we're, they're not receiving the actual service. Uh, we've also a number of responses received supporting larger bins and the need for more flexibility in the uh, services that we are offering. Uh, 
the feedback so far from the survey, and it, it only has been out uh, second July. We've had uh, we had sixteen thousand residents. We've had twelve hundred and twelve responses to date. Um, interesting, the significant proportion of residents fill their red and green bins all the time. That's between 38-41%. Uh, and uh, only 29% fill their recycling bins. Uh, the majority of the residents are happy with the yellow bin capacity at 62%. However, responses received so far show the stronger desire for more flexibility over the red and green options. Um, also, we have feedback that people wouldn't want to pay more for larger recycling and organics, but would expect to pay more for larger bin. And this is part of our work is, you know, how do we incentivise those who want to do the right thing, they want to uh, have uh, uh, more recycling, more organics, but those who are do have the requirement of uh, more rubbish, or they're a large family, produce a lot more rubbish, you know, how, how do we, we um, charge for that accordingly? Uh, the next one's just a map, we're looking at expanding our curbside service, that's just a map there of the inner city, that's the current areas. Uh, we can increase that curbside collection area and make the inner city area uh, uh, smaller and we've, we're also working on a number of options of the best way to um, provide the service in the inner city and it may not just be one option, it may be a number of options which is, which is what we will we'll be working through. And also be, uh, looking at uh, Banks Peninsula, uh, the, we have identified several areas um, and Burlings Flats are a, a perfect example of where we could be, be providing that service, um, at the curbside collection service. And on the flip side of that, we have a transfer station there at Birdlings Flat, and that would, would no longer be re required. So, so that's another issue that we're going to be uh, addressing. Uh, once again, uh, any of those changes will be part of a, a public uh, consultation process. And finally, getting on to the glass recovery, looking at evaluating the separate glass collection. As you'll see, there's a number of considerations to, to take into to place there. Uh, I don't think you'll find any argument that separating materials at source is by far the best way to, to have clean recycling. Once it's commingled, you're then trying to separate it back out. Um, but some of the considerations are, in particular, with the uh, proposed government container return scheme, just the impact that will have on our recycling volumes. Uh, and Australia has seen an impact of up to 80% of material not going in the recycling bin. Um, so th those are the things we, we will be considering as we go through. Uh, so thank you. If there's any questions. Thanks, Ross. That's interesting. Okay. So we've got Phil Dignani. Hey, thanks, guys. I've got a handful here. Um, the archaeological report for Le Bon's Bay which was coming last month. Have we got it? Yep. Okay. And is yes. there anything that we probably uh, don't need to know? Oh, yeah. Look, I think in summary, it's it's pretty low level. Um, they are recommending that we do have someone in archaeology there monitoring the works on site. Yes. Um, and but. From, from the work that they've done, that they don't think there's much risk there of finding um, okay. it remains. And, and you've got a contractor on board and you, you've yeah. let it? Have, can you allow to, to tell me the dollars or not? Look, I think there's probably been some confusion over the... Um, I, I believe that there was... Um, original option was around the 250k, which we presented to, to Council back in November, but... It was the removal of the um, landfill, which yeah. was estimated 750 to a million. So that's yeah. the budget we, mm -hmm. we, we have there. And we believe that we're going to be uh, within that budget. We do have a contractor ready to go, um, but we just need to have that other parts, this consent finalised before we progress that. Okay. Um, and the one at Bexley Landfill, does that come in around the budget of what you were hoping? Uh, I'd... 
I'm a bit frustrated on this one. We, we haven't progressed. Um, we've still at the, we put our consents into ECAN in April. They've come back, asked for more information. We've given them more information with back and forth, and we still haven't progressed the works. We've got a contractor there ready to go. You, you, um, what, and you don't have to answer this. Would, would you, I'm not going to put words in your mouth. Yep. What, what, ECAN should be bending over backwards to help us get this sorted rather than throwing hurdles in our, in our face. You think? You Environment Canterbury are the regulator and they will behave as the regulator and treat us as they would any other applicant. Are we doing consents ourselves for it? Do we have to do consents? Yes, we, we, do. So we, we apply for us. consents, yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Okay. Now, one of the things I know <coughs> down there, there is a whole lot of the, the rocks that they're going to use for the edge. There's a hell of a lot of really big rocks down there that have come from the earthquakes and what have you. We shouldn't waste those down there. We should take them over to Andrew at Naval Point and use them where they need really big rocks because large rocks cost a lot of money. Yeah. Can we take that offline? Mm, fair enough. Yeah. <laughs> Look, we don't have a requirement for all those rocks. Because there are other people to talk about, talk to about that. Okay. Yeah. Yep. But we, I, I just don't want to see them wasted mm. on that job. Well, I look, happy to look at it as an opportunity, okay. but I'll need to talk to some other people right as well. On. Okay. The Anuku landfill, I, I know it needs <coughs> clay or cover on it. Have have we approached people in the area, builders or whoever's working there, people, and I'm saying it'd have to be people you could trust, that would be able to deposit excavated material there because I know it's a big problem getting rid of stuff from Akaroa. You've got to sometimes cut it all the way back to town, and it could end up we could get cover there for practically nothing. Yeah, yeah like, I reckon that's a great. I remember you mentioned last time it's a, it's a great suggestion. Our project manager is aware of it. We haven't started the works there. Okay. We will. We, we, we're we're um, anticipating to to have that complete in November. So over that period, we will make those um, okay. connections. Okay. Um, and sorry, Helen, the compost to the oxidation ponds. Are we? <coughs> I went down there and had a look. Are we going to, there's planting there, you've got the water, then you've got a large area where all the stuff's been dumped. Is it just going to be levelled out there and that's the bit that's been replanted? So but, there are um, there are three areas that will be where we're spreading compost and we'll be planting, yes. Okay. Yeah, so the, and it's all of that area between the um, the ponds and the residential area. Mm -hmm. Yeah, otherwise we get midges blown across. Mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm. of course, we're planting natives, so um, it'll it'll look better It'll perform better, and ecologically, it'll be um, a lot better. So more or less, from the edge of the pond to the road, so uh, you can say for residential houses, it'll be not completely that area, but there is a very broad area yeah, of planting is. which stops the images. Yes. Okay, thank you. Um, and one of the things I, I, I found out the other day that the contamination for um, recycling and selling was only three <clears> percent, <throat> mainly because they've got, from what I understand, a larger red bin. I, and I'm delighted to hear what you were saying, that we won't be stopping people or discouraging people to have a larger red bin if they're happy to pay for it. Is that what we're working towards? Yeah, and look, we've... Um, um, and Selwyn is a good example because they do offer that flexibility um, where people can purchase and pay for that that, uh, that service. Um, and we believe that's going to be the, 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 the next... You know, we've got so far with all the marketing and education, and I think the next thing is to be able to provide that additional um, capacity and, and reduce that contamination. But because no matter in the best will in the world, as you said, some people have big families or reasons yeah. um, why they always fill a red bin up through through no real fault of their own. Yeah, because at the moment we, we don't we're not providing a, a, a an alternative. We're mm. saying this is your set, that's it, mm. and uh, so we need to be able to offer a solution. Okay. And and the last one, sorry. Um, with, is it right that we our collection guys can't dump at the transfer stations after four o'clock or four thirty? Uh, look, in the contract is is specified that the, the time is is uh, four thirty. However, we do allow we do allow it to to go on beyond that if if it's required, depending on the circumstance. Yeah. Yeah, and there's there's no way it, it all has to go to a transfer station. We can't take it to the collection contractor's own transfer station and get it go through there. No, not, even though not, it's not, only five meters away from our one. Yeah, but not the way the contracts are written because we, we want that material to come back through through council yeah facilities. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Is that it?
finish. <laughs> okay, Yanni. Um, so I just I just wanted to pick up on um, the contractor missing its performance. So, like, I guess it's concerning to read about this after the fact, and I don't know if we've had a memo on it. Um, there's certainly nothing on, as I can see, on the council website or in the app telling people that there are service delivery problems. So I'm just trying to understand what proactive communication we've had in that regard. Uh, look, we, we, I, we have um, put it through to uh, a memo through, I'm not sure, off the top of my head, I'm not sure if it went to, to councillors. Um, the the non-compliance, um, it, it is marginal in the sense that we allow 1.5 missed streets per day. Um, at the moment, it's currently tracking at about 1.7 missed streets, which is failing that, that KPI. Um, where we, we have um, um, taken, the, uh, taken it to the contractor is where they've had perhaps 20 missed streets in one day, which is um, unacceptable. So that doesn't happen very often. Like I say, on average, they're, they're around right. about that 1.6, 1.7, but we want to see um, that improve and we want to see a better service to the resident. So I was just thinking of like the water leaks memo that we finally got, which was excellent, which kind of showed the trends, it showed the kind of where the, the lag was and then how it was catching up. Is it possible to get, because I just have not, like, we've got this stuff in here, which when you read it is quite concerning, mm -hmm. but it doesn't actually tell you the scale of the problem. Okay. Um, and it, it, it certainly, I mean, I mean, I don't know whether this is a, a, a matter for audit and risk, um, but, you know, like it does concern me that um, we're seeing COVID being um, given as a, as a reason. And it, it, it seems to me that, yeah, we just need to get really clear about what the actual issue is and have confidence that um, the steps taken will actually sort the situation out, given that this is a, a private contractor, basically. Um, so I don't know... Can you send a memo out about that then? Wait, yeah, so we'll possible? provide a memo yeah. on the performance against the contract, yeah. what we've done to date and what we propose to do in the future. And if it's significant is it possible to get something going either on the app or on the website because at the moment the, the, the reasons listed for the the bins not being collected um don't actually mention that there's an issue with the contractor mm. well, the, so that's been so so the um the particular issue has been brought back under control so right, i don't okay. think we need to put anything out to the general public at the moment okay um however i take your point that if we if we see that issue again yeah. that, that we need to go out straight away okay just um a few other questions so just uh, i think it's unfortunate the terminology around the user charges around the, the consultation because basically we already have a user charges system for the bins the 312 dollars it's just that we're giving more flexibility within the existing charging regime right so i think it might yeah might be quite good for useful just to kind of clarify that in the newsline or the communications that there is already a user charges component or a, fit, a, a set component that we charge 312 and we're, we're looking to give people flexibility within that so so when we when we get to the proposals we will yeah. have a whole communications plan around that which okay. we'll bring back to you before we before we go out for consultation. consultation yeah. yeah, I guess yeah. some people in the community are, are, are sort of raising concerns around the impact on, um, like, tenants protection, for example, around what happens around landlords choosing a smaller option and tenants not having a, a choice. So maybe we can pick up some of those concerns. That does need to be part of the consultation. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I just wanted to check, like, so I think we've asked... Oh, I want to acknowledge the good work that you've done on the reducing the contamination in the yellow bins. I mean, I think, you know, it's a pretty positive story overall. Um, but I think there's some concerns that certainly have been raised with me from residents. Um, and one is that they feel that certain geographic areas are being repeatedly targeted mm -hmm. and audited. Mm -hmm. And that, you know, it's obviously a bit resentful of that, which, which I can understand. So I just, I think we'd asked previously for some advice around the geographic um, auditing and what was happening. 
Yes, and we um, we did respond to that. So yes, some areas are repeatedly targeted and audited, particularly if they are repeatedly high with contamination. So we follow the contamination with our auditing Sorry, and focus that, on okay. those areas. Can that be recirculated? Sorry, I've, I've, I've missed it. Certainly. Yeah. Thank you. Um, and the other thing that people have raised concern with me is just the tone So of some of the, the letters. And it would be quite good, for I think, for us to see the letters going out where people... Um, there's been someone else has contaminated someone someone's bin, and so I know we've had a bit of a communications campaign around that. But the residents have raised concern with me that the tone is quite um, not threatening, but it's just it's quite harsh for people that have done nothing wrong. And so I just wondered if we could see a copy of the communication that's going out and get some sense of the purpose of what we're doing and why. Because alienating people that are doing the right thing, I think, is a concern. And also just, um, like, some areas, we have we have got a huge issue with rubbish in general. And, and you know, like, there's certain parts of the city where, um, yep, yep, the, based those, on demographics, we're seeing a huge influx in and people illegally dumping rubbish on the street or in people's bins. That's so correct. That, so that's a generic letter that you send out? Or yes. put in the well, there's a series yeah. of letters. Yeah. It'd be yeah. nice if we could see those of the whole committee. Certainly. So yeah. we'll send a memo and attach those for you. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, I've just got one question also um, on the, the maturing compost in the windrows. Um, what's about the percentage of that that's now been removed off-site at the organics processing plant, do you know? Of the yes. matured compost material? Maturing, everything outside. So, so, so we make a distinction between um, maturing, so it's continuing to compost, and matured, which is stored outside as a stockpile. So it'd be good to know which one you're, or if so you're interested they, in perhaps both. Are they both outside? Yes. So you're removing both? At the moment we're, redu we're removing the mature compost, but we're looking at trialling the maturing compost as well. So how much of the, well, what's the ratio between the two types of compost for a start? Which mm. is the bigger amount? At the moment it's about 80% mature. Yeah, it's a continuous process, so yeah, you, you've always got more material coming in, which is then screened as it's put into so one So how row. much of the maturing, no, how much of the matured have has been removed, do you think? Right, so um, there's about 4,000 tonnes have, gone already um, what we've uh, agreed with ECAN as part of our transitional plan is to provide updates um, to them and to the community every fortnight um, we've actually set up a time-lapse camera and that is part of the reporting so you can actually visually see the reduction in compost on site right because um, we found that was Probably a better way of, of showing it rather than just just numbers because numbers may not mean mean too much. We are aiming to we, we did have a, a bit of a hold up in June with that because of the wet weather and and most of the material is going out onto farms or to wastewater treatment plants, so access became a problem. So um, there was a, a reduction over June, but we're back on um, target about two hundred fifty tons a day are being removed. Right. So, what's that in a, as, a, as a percentage? Uh, percentage wise, I think we have had about fifteen to twenty percent removed, but that will be. Um, I do have a graph on that. And do you think that could so be about fifteen percent? Yeah. yeah. Could that be adding to the the odour when it's it's actually moved? Uh, we have been asked that question. Um, it's no more than would go out over a peak period. So when the sales, the peak, uh, are sort of over about October, November. Yeah. So there's no more tonnage that would be moved um, during the normal process and loading out over a peak period. So uh, no, we don't believe that that is adding to, to okay. any odour. All right. Thank you. Oh, Phil. Sorry. So the stuff that's gone is only the, the finished screen matured stuff. All of the um, unscreened stuff is quietly working its way through the system. The maturity. Okay, thank you. Yeah. All right, if there's no more questions. Yanni. Sorry, just um, two things, sorry. 
just the map that you had in your presentation around the inner city collection area is so I can't read the key and I can't zoom in. Is that the proposed new area or is that so the existing? Yeah. Right. So, so part of the new area, we, we've, we've already got a, an indication from the collections contractor where they can, uh, I mean, like uh, Cambridge Terrace and area there, which they can include in their normal um, three bin system. So we're looking at getting as much as that covered as we can. And then the remainder will be what we work So, But just in terms of the survey, is there a clear map of what we've currently got and what we're proposing and an opportunity for residents to say, actually... We're not at that level of detail yet. It will okay. go out for consultation, but we're not at that level yet. All right. Can I, can I just read back that the resident that came to us about six or seven years ago lived on um, Cambridge Terrace, but the bins go on Kilmore Street. And, I mean, you know, like, it's... I mean, um, it would be good just to have some ability to um, raise that area being included. And that will come out through the consultation as well. And, and, yeah, and that, look, that will be one of the, the no-brainers, if you like. That's, yeah. It yeah, should be included. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then just the other question about the organics, um, the, the plant. So obviously there's a report coming out today, I think. Um, so we don't, have, we don't have the June report yet, but 7th of July... Have we got that report? And then I guess the other thing, the other concern is that, like, you're doing a transitional plan, but it's like you're going to do it and then tell the community and tell us. So is there any ability for us to actually see it before it's finalised to just, you know, provide some governance oversight, given that this place has got so many non-compliances ongoing, increasing, um, you know, uh, it's yeah, there will be an opportunity to, to provide that to you. Um, it will be a tight time frame where it's a two weekly report we do to, to ECAN, so on a Friday. So we could um, uh, have that to you by Friday lunchtime if that's if that works. Thanks, Ross. Give an opportunity good. before we send it to um, ECAN by close of business. I'm just talking about on page um, 72 where it says. Um, these changes will be detailed on a transitional plan being developed in collaboration with Environment Canterbury. Once finalised, the plan will release to elected members and the community. So I'm just checking if there's any process at us at the governance level to have input into that transitional plan and to see actually if the community have any chance to have input as well before it's finalised. So we're treating that as a living document, so that is that is available online, but we can get that to you. Um, uh, if you if you wish directly, um, so any suggestions, recommendations, okay. we'd be happy to, to look at. I think that might be quite useful. Like we've got the small group of elected members, and y you know, not everyone may be interested in it, but it'd be great. Thank you. Know, you. I think that would be useful. Thank Thanks, you. Yanni. All right. Well, if there's no more questions, I will um, move the that we receive the report. Mike, second it. Any debate? Comments. Thank you very much for a really good report. Thank Thanks you. for the presentation. Thank you. Sorry, I'll it's late. Motion. All those in favour say aye. 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 Opposed. That's carried. So moving to the time where we close the meeting, I'll ask James Daniels to do the karakia. But just a couple of words for James. I haven't prepared anything because this is your last 